God damn it, I gotta do it. How's it going, guys? This is Cavinet Gaming, and I had to do it. I had to open up that can of worms. I can't stay away, okay? I've tried to talk about other things. I've tried to do my other playthroughs. I've tried to do my other streams, but I can't. I've put it off for too long. I have to talk about The Elder Scrolls Six now. I'm, I'm opening the can of worms and, and, and looking out into the void because we really know nothing. I just got to talk about it, okay? So we're going through five things today that need to be in The Elder Scrolls Six. I'm not talking about blue sky wants. I'm not talking about, man, it would be nice if. I'm talking about if the Elder Scrolls VI does not have this feature or mechanic, it's going to be a huge miss in my mind. So let's get started with number one. Number one is a return to player freedom through verticality. Now, this is something I talked about in my original coffee talk about what made Morrowind so great. And one of those things is player freedom and expression through movement. This was incredibly limited when you look backwards in the franchise, okay? In Daggerfall, you could climb buildings. In Morrowind, you could levitate all over the place. And then in Oblivion and Skyrim, you are stuck on that two-dimensional X plane. And then you, you can only really go where Bethesda wants you to go. It is much more limited than, say, all the other mechanics in the previous game. In previous games, guys. In previous games, okay? So... We need to see a return to this kind of verticality and traversal of the world if I'm going to consider Elder Scrolls VI a win, okay? Because we're going into the next generation of consoles and the next generation of Elder Scrolls games, and I think the way that we fully pull forward into the next generation is, is to look back at our roots and where we came from and what really, really worked in the past. Technology isn't an excuse anymore. If, if we could levitate and fly on the Xbox Gen 1, not 1, why couldn't we do it on the 360? You know, there's, there's no excuse anymore. Or, or the Xbox One. You know, there's no excuse anymore. PS5 comes out next year. The new Xbox comes out next year. We're gonna, when the Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, we'll probably have had two years with the console cycle. Limiting player movement is no longer a technical excuse it is laziness uh, on Bethesda's part. That's why if we do not see a return to player movement freedom, you know, introducing that Z axis again, so you can fly and levitate or climb, I, I think this is going to be a huge miss. Look at games like Breath of the Wild, that, that feeling of exploration and empowerment that you got as a player when you could set your sights literally anywhere and go there without worry of an invisible wall or a cliff that you can't jump over. It was the best feeling of exploration I've ever had in a game because it was limitless. It brought me back to Morrowind. It brought me back to Daggerfall. So if the Elder Scrolls Six is going to be successful, we need to look back and not just ahead. All right, now number two of what the Elder Scrolls Six needs in order to be successful is something that has plagued the Elder Scrolls since its inception, okay? And this is something that many of us, most of us maybe even thought was, was going to be handled when Skyrim released. But especially now, huge miss. Hand-to-hand -hand combat and combat in general. Mainly hand-to-hand -hand in swordplay, though. There's been huge leaps and bounds in swordplay in games nowadays. And in, let's look at Mordhau. Let's look at Chivalry of Medieval Warfare. Let's look at Kingdom Come Deliverance. Swordplay has been brought into the next generation. So if the Elder Scrolls VI is going to be successful, they need to look at those predecessors that I just mentioned and distill down the best qualities of what made swordplay work in those games and then get away from this just hack and slash battle of whoever has A, the most stamina, or B, the most health. And let's be honest, it's usually just focused on the health unless you're playing like Morrowind or Daggerfall where misses are a thing. In Skyrim, you swing, you hit, 
and, and, and that's all there is. And you just sit there hacking and slashing and, until the deed is done. That should not fly in the Elder Scrolls Six. It, it should not even be a possibility that they go back to the same kind of combat that we got in Skyrim. Because, you know, we're, we're spoiled now, to be honest. <laughs> Swordplay has, has evolved, like I said, ba you know, with games like Mordhau, with games like Chivalry. It doesn't have to be as tactical as a game like Mordhau, but it needs to distill down some of that, some of that strategic principle and, and become something greater than just a slugfest. Because, I, you know, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim. I travel a lot for work. I'm in planes a lot. I'm, I've been playing Skyrim on the planes, and it kind of bores me sometimes. Combat, especially when you're going through a bandit camp and you're just cutting through swaths of the same guy. You know, you never should have come here. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I shouldn't have come here because, you know, I got to fight 50 of you. And it doesn't feel rewarding. It's 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 unacceptable if if the Elder Scrolls Six does not improve hand to hand combat and sword play. Okay, so that's number two. It has to do it, or I and many many fans will be very very upset. So listen up, Bethesda, fix your damn combat, please. Okay, please. All right, on to number three now, and this is a problem that I never thought I'd have to think about with the Elder Scrolls because something that has always impressed me since Morrowind has been unique named weapons, okay? Unique named weapons. In the base game of Skyrim, I think there was like 80-something uh, unique weapons. When we look to the next game that Bethesda did, when we look to Fallout 4, okay? Yeah, I'm looking at you, Fallout 4, again. We, we had a massive drop to unique named weapons, down to like 47 to 50. What? If that legendary random gen looter shooter mechanic finds its way into the Elder Scrolls 6, I will be beside myself. I think most RPG fans will be beside themselves because the Elder Scrolls 6 should play, in my opinion, like a storybook. Nothing, nothing replaces a Bethesda written, a Bethesda crafted world, weapons, and story, right? So when I was playing Fallout 4 and you reach the end of an amazing quest, say in Skyrim, you'd get the Mesa Malag Ball. And it just, it'd blow your mind. It fits so well, looks so cool, did so many amazing things. And then you're playing Fallout 4 and you do an equally impressive quest and you get rewarded with some randomly generated nothing. That cannot find its way into the Elder Scrolls 6. Or if it does, it should not be replacing unique name weapons. If, if they do any kind of procedural gener generation, it should be with, like, common weapons. And I think it should only be graphical. Like, if we have, like, five different iron swords that, that one looks, the di looks different but has the same stats, that actually be pretty cool. That, that increased player choice and, and variety. Please, Bethesda, please keep, keep, keep the looter shooter mechanics out of RPGs from here on, okay? It didn't work in Fallout 4. And, and it certainly, certainly would not work in the Elder Scrolls. Not just Elder Scrolls 6, but Elder Scrolls 7, 8, 9, 10. We don't want it, okay? So, so get your notepad out. <laughs> Moving on to number four now. This is something that I think many of us have always thought would be in the, in the Elder Scrolls, or at least would have a place in the Elder Scrolls. But I think that moving into the next generation, this really needs to be enforced, right? And this would be an increased diversity of player experiences. Now, what does that mean? Elder Scrolls, any RPG, really. You know, you're a mage, you're a spell slinger. Okay. You're a sneaky archer. Okay. You're a two-handed, heavy weapon, heavy armor guy. Great. Sword and shield person. Awesome. Uh, thief with a dagger. You know, we've been there. We've done it. We've, we've seen it a thousand times. What I think should happen, and I don't say this often, but look to games like MMORPGs where there are different roles that players can fill that aren't necessarily combative. What does that mean? That means if, if I want to play a merchant, I should be able to play a merchant. I should be able to get my way through the game through speechcraft only. 
I should be able to get through the game with, you know, small weapons only, maybe just unarmed hand to hand, and I should be able to have no problem. If I want to be a pacifist monk, I should be able to have a playthrough of the game like that. And people have done it in Skyrim by, you know, using companions to kill all the all the monsters that are necessary for quests. But I think Bethesda should really embrace this if they want to catapult themselves into the upper echelon again of RPGs because now they're competing with games like Cyberpunk, Witcher 3, Kingdom Come Deliverance, all these incredible original stories that it's just going to leave the same run-of-the-mill player experience behind now, okay? We've seen it. We've seen the sneaky archer. We've all been the guy, you know, with heavy armor and a war hammer. Let's do something different. Let me be a pacifist. Let me be a monk. Let me be a fur trader, a huntsman. You know, do let me do something different. Widen the player experiences. Widen the realm of possibilities and the roles that someone can fill. Because if if we just go down the same path again, where you're the hero of Hammerfell, you know, you're the chosen one. You get, you're there to defeat the the you know giants of whatever mountains are there. That's going to be a letdown. It's really going to be a letdown. I think we should look back to the original Elder Scrolls games where you're a, you're a no one. You're a prisoner. And then you become the hero, right? And you should be able to do it however you want. So increased diversity of player experiences. Number four, break away from the archetypes and let us be who we want to be in this new world. And I don't mean this has to be fully fleshed out, but we should be able to say that we got 75% there if we want to consider this a jump forward for role-playing games, right? And that should be what the Elder Scrolls VI is, because every every entry in the series should be able to build on each other, and not only build on each other, but build on itself from the games around it, right? Increased player experiences. That's what we want. All right, on to number five now, and that is we need warring factions in the Elder Scrolls 6 and by warring I mean consequences associated with the factions that actually matter all right and th this is something that I've spoken about in on my stream and in previous videos is that consequences that matter have to be in the Elder Scrolls 6 look at the games like the Outer Worlds now look at the games like Witcher 3 look at all the decisions and the branches and the plots, and how you can really make and shape a story and make it yours. And mainly, these choices circle around either A, characters, or B, factions that you are supporting, right? Because those are your set pieces that, that give you more quests or, you know, give you weapons, you know, give you gold, give you reputation, give you information, right? So we need, in The Elder Scrolls VI, warring factions that with choices that matter. You saw some of this in Morrowind, right? And it's kind of tapered off as the playability of the series has, has increased for good or ill, depending on your, you know, depending on your view of Skyrim. But we saw this in Morrowind. When you're in that Fighter's Guild quest, and you have to go and kill the members of the Thieves' Guild, you are shaping the world around you with your choices. That is an incredibly impactful quest because you, the player, have to make a decision that is is going to inf affect you, yes, but it's also going to affect the world around you, right? It's it's like it's you know you're reading the book that right there, that decision. Do I kill him and shut off the entire thieves' gold quest? That is the last sentence of a cliffhanger before you start the new chapter of a really good book. That's what it feels like. We got to go back to that. We we need to get back to the roots of, of RPGs in The Elder Scrolls VI because nothing is more rewarding than getting to the end of an incredible adventure and not only looking at all the incredible armor that you have, you know, all the amazing weapons that you have, your house, your gold, but it's also looking at the scars that you have left on the world around you and the scars that you have taken yourself based on your own choices. That's, that's why we like the grizzled veteran soldier. You know, that's why we respect him. <laughs> and that's, that's how it should be for a player as well and future players of the Elder Scrolls series. We want consequences and we want them to circle around factions and how they alter the world. So there it is. That's all I got. 
Those are my those are my five needs. These aren't wants. These aren't blue skies. These are my five needs that the Elder Scrolls Six has to implement somehow. If if any one of these is missing, you know I'm going to be incredibly disappointed. If we lean heavier under procedurally generated weapons, I'm going to cry. If we get forced down the same you know archetypes that we've played in in a million different games now, you know it's going to be a letdown. If if we have consequences that don't matter. You know, I'm going to be upset. If we have the same hack and slash, you know, dice roll combat, please don't go back to the Morrowind combat. I love that game. The combat's not good. <laughs> Skyrim's isn't good either, though. So, we, you know, we need to reinvent the combat. And then and then finally, if, if and this is the main one for me. That's why I led for it. But if, if we don't have another return to freedom of player movement and verticality, bring that Z axis in again, break us off of those, you know, two-dimensional playing fields, then I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be disappointed. The Elder Scrolls 6 will be a bust and it's been how how many years in the making? Gosh, it'll probably it, it feels like it'll be 20 by the time it comes out. That's enough screaming and yelling for me. This has been the Coffee Nut. Catch me in the next video. I'm working on a new Morrowind playthrough right now and I think I may dip into this well again and not do the five things that, you know, Elder Scrolls 6 needs, but maybe the five things that I want from Elder Scrolls 6 because there's some of those as well. Some nice to haves. I got some ideas cooking in the back. So stay tuned. You know, be sure to like and subscribe. Drop drop your needs down in the comments. And I'll see you on the next one. Coffee Nut out.